Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome back to the channel. It's been a minute. Basically, I haven't felt like uploading here. I was working on more music for my music channel because I wanted to make music. I wanted to keep improving and I wanted to keep getting better. And I did. I would definitely say I have. Uh, I released my newest song like a day or two ago. It's called Devil's Game. Probably my best work when it comes to the hyper pop genre. But basically, I'm going to let y'all know how things have been and more reasons I haven't really felt like uploading or doing anything. And uh, I'll get right to that. So the, the biggest thing is I started working at Amazon and I feel like my social life has been completely thrown out the window. I know I said back in a video I made called Life that I would never go back to FedEx. I would pick FedEx over Amazon absolutely any day. I don't like Amazon, not even one bit. And it's miserable. I think FedEx is way better than Amazon. Basically, I was told by a lot of people that Amazon was a great place to work for people who are introverted or have really bad social anxiety. I wouldn't consider myself an introvert, but I do have really bad anxiety. That's why I take uh, Trintilex and I take uh, Raylar, which are two medications. And personally, right? Um, I Basically, the point is I got really bad anxiety. No need to keep adding shit, but I've had multiple anxiety attacks at Amazon. The first one I had was within a couple days of starting. Um, basically, I was told... By many people, it was a good place for people with anxiety, this and that, blah, 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 like I said. And uh, you could either be packing or stowing. And packing is where there's like the packages, you put them in the packages. I think you're, I think you guys aren't that stupid. I think you guys know. And I'm not saying if you don't know you're stupid, but I'm saying it's packing. It's literally within the name. It's, that's exactly what it is. And stowing is uh, you're in this little cubicle by yourself. And what you do is a little bin will come up or a bunch of bins, and there's a little robot on a Roomba that comes by. And what you do is you, the light will shine where the item is that you need to grab. You grab the item, and you put it in the bin, and you tap a button. It's as easy as that, and I thought it would be no problem whatsoever. But knowing my luck, I had to get put in a position over at Amazon that really, really fucks with my anxiety. And that is ShipDoc. ShipDoc is actual horseshit. I would rather be anywhere else. I would rather work at Envelope Mart again, which is my first job I've ever had. And I absolutely despised it. And basically, the things that I do on ShipDoc, there's three things. There is loading trailers. There's uh, pallets. And there's carts. Now, I've had an anxiety attack with all three of these things. Basically, when it comes to loading trailers, it's like FedEx, similarly, but on crack. Now, let me explain why. So, let's say you have a small amount of packages coming in, like you're not getting as much. It's not that bad. It's really not that bad. It comes down, it's easy, it's simple, it's this and that, yada, yada, yada. But when it's really heavy, it's bad. Basically, you have to load at a certain rate. And, well, not a certain rate. You just got to go get as many packages within that trailer as you possibly can. Now, what happens is, unlike FedEx, because FedEx has a chute with rollers. It comes down to rollers into the trailer. And it's normally one at a time, but it's consistent. It's like, phew, 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 phew. It's very consistent. With Amazon, it comes down a chute onto a conveyor belt. And the conveyor belt takes the packages into the 50-foot trailers, and you take the package and load it. It sounds simple. But here's the problem. Let's say you have a heavy amount of packages and you can't get to all of them as quickly as possible because you're trying to figure out places to put these boxes to make the walls look neat. Because if you know anything about loading trailers, you have to load walls in order to keep the packages within it and avoid it getting sloppy, even though it really doesn't matter because I was told from multiple Amazon workers that um, every time the truck goes, all the boxes fall all over anyway. So I really don't see the point, but I get it. You want to fit in as many as humanly possible. And 
let's say there's a lot on the belt. Basically, there's a little sensor nearby where you grab the package. When a box reaches that sensor, it stops the conveyor belt. Now, let's say you're stopped for a certain amount of time and packages are going down as crazily as possible. There's a shit ton of packages nonstop. They build up. And there could be 20 packages within one small area. And there could be hundreds more coming at you. But it's not stopping and the conveyor belt stopped. So there's so many packages. And I had that. Happened to me. And... I had the biggest anxiety attack that I think I've ever had. I was scared shitless and I didn't think I could handle it. I was going to quit that day, but I didn't so far. Now, the next thing is pallets. In my opinion, the absolute worst thing at Amazon or on ship dock. When it comes to pallets, you get a wooden pallet, put it on the ground, use a little scanner, activate it, blah, blah, blah. That's the easy part. Then you have to stack packages on that pallet to about six feet or under and I'm five foot 11. So the problem with that is there's a little shoot where the packages come down. You scan the package, you put it on the pallet. Not every package comes down being the size that you want it to. And you have to figure out ways to make it look neat as possible. And there's a lot of times that it'll look like it's slanted over and you could get in trouble for that, or at least from what I hear, because they don't want you making the whole pallet like tilt over or this or that. So you can fit them into a trailer. And I would always get really bad anxiety doing them because I could never keep a good stack going. There was always one box that would come down where I had to put it on there, but Didn't know how. So I put it in a position. Hold on one second. Had to pause that I was being called by my grandmother. But basically, where was I? I had to fit these packages onto the pallet a certain way. And it would end up with me getting more boxes that would fit. But because of that one package, it would fuck everything up. So uh, I had a lot of anxiety attacks doing that. Next up is carts. Carts is my personal favorite when it comes to trickling. Trickling is basically where... You scan the package and put it in the cart. And you just stack the cart full and then you close the cart. Easy. No problem. Till they make you move the carts. I couldn't do it. It, I had an anxiety attack so bad from that, I had to go to the manager and I had to tell her, I can't do this. Basically what happened is you close the cart with your scanner. You do a bunch of shit on it, little options, yada, yada, yada. And... You go print out stickers, you put them on there, then you have to pull these carts filled with boxes that can be anywhere up to 40 pounds, and it's a bunch of them, so the cart's quite heavy. And then they make you lock the two back wheels so it goes only in a straight line, and the only way you can turn it is by using the front of the cart. Now, the problem with that is when you get the sticker and you have your little scanner, it tells you where it's supposed to go, and there's like a whole area where you're supposed to take carts and pallets. Luckily, I never had to worry about using a pallet because I was never taught how to use the moving jacks or whatever the fuck you call them. So, I tried moving it for the first time. I felt shaky a bit, but I was content until there were no spots open to put it. I was standing in the middle of the floor while many, many people were walking by me, and I felt like I was going to get yelled at because I was warned about this thing at Amazon called TOT, time off task, and I could get in trouble for that. So I started having the biggest anxiety attack I've had in probably years to the point I started crying in the middle of the floor because I couldn't move this damn cart and I didn't know where to put it. I had to ask a random person walking by to help me out. And I did. And we eventually figured out a spot to put it. But after that, I said, I can't do it. So basically, I'm at a disadvantage when it comes to all three of those things. And I'm not staying at Amazon. I actually was able to finally reach out, put an application back into FedEx, and I'm probably going back to FedEx for the fourth time. Hopefully this is the final time, but I'm also hoping that I stay there. But yeah, that, not only that, the reason I also feel like I got no social life is because I've done all that shit for up to 10 hours a day. 10 hours. 
Now I get it. There's a lot of people saying, boy, I don't see why you're complaining. I used to work 12. I'm not you. I will never be you. I have a lot of mental health issues and a bunch of this and a bunch of that. I'm not like a lot of people who have that work ethic. And I need to work my way up to getting into that work ethic. Now, that brings me on to something else that I wanted to talk about. New Year's is coming up. Because of New Year's coming up, I have a lot of resolutions I'm going to be attempting. And I fail every single year. I've wanted to lose weight because I got a belly on me. And I've always been on the chubbier side since uh, 20, 2018. So it's been a while. And I always fail. But this time I'm putting everything I have into succeeding. Because I'm tired of failing. I'm tired of people looking at me like, oh, you're just going to try again and fail later. I'm tired of it. I'm beyond sick of it. I feel like the way that I eat, the fact I smoke a shit ton of weed, and I started vaping. Yes, nicotine. So let me tell you all my New Year's resolutions. Starting off with the easier one. Dropping nicotine completely. Basically, vaping sucks. Don't get into it. Don't ever start it. It sucks. It's not good for you. And the addictions are real. It really is. And I'm neurodivergent. I have autism. I have ADHD. I have a bunch of shit. I even have PDD. So my brain processes differently from other people. But... An addiction is still an addiction. And because of that, I got addicted to vaping this year. I just wanted to try it at first, ended up puffing it away, and I really started to like it. I realized how much it fucked me up. It drained my mental state, and I feel less motivated to do things since I started vaping. Uh, so that's the easy one. I'm going to drop this cold turkey. I'm making a a vlog on New Year's. Like right when it reaches midnight, I'm taking this. And more likely giving it away. Or smashing it to the ground depending on the situation. I don't know yet. Because this was $15. Second thing. This one's going to be pretty damn hard for me. Because I've gained a dependency... On marijuana, I have gained a dependency where I want to smoke every single day. I just want to be high off my ass sometimes. And I don't want to be like that anymore. I really don't. So, basically, I'm cutting back on weed pretty heavy. I will normally, every paycheck I get, I'll go get a new dab pen, which is, uh, I got this. This little pen right here is a dab pen. Basically, you get a little electronic device similar to a vape, but instead of nicotine in it, it's weed. And you smoke it, and you get high off it. I want to cut back on that. I'm going to, instead of buying a dab pen or something weed-like every single paycheck to paycheck to paycheck, I told myself I'm only going to buy a dab pen once every three months, and I'm going to buy edibles once every month. Now... That one's going to be pretty hard for me because I love the smoke. But I know that I can't be doing it as much. It's really affecting me. Now, on to the the most difficult ones that I'm planning on doing. This is going to really, really suck. Starting off with the easiest of the three, I'm going to be quitting fast food. Or not really quitting, but... Um... Getting off of fat. I don't know. I don't know the correct way to phrase it. Basically, I'm cutting back on fast food. There we go. I'm cutting back pretty heavy on fast food. Because every paycheck I... Like, literally, my last paycheck, I ordered me and my whole family $100 worth of Wendy's through DoorDash. And I had two pretzel Baconators. I had a thing of fries that were covered in cheese and bacon. The Baconator fries. And I had two Dr. Peppers. 
that had to have been anywhere from 2,000 to 3,000 calories within one meal, and I was still hungry after. And I feel like with how much fast food I eat, I crave it constantly. And I don't want to do that anymore. I really don't. So my goal is I'm going to have fast food twice a month, once every two weeks. And there's a rule though. When I do get fast food, I can only have something that's a thousand calories or under. So I'm, I'm laying that down for myself pretty heavy. Next up, I'm quitting candy. Now I am a diehard fan of Skittles. And I got me this for Christmas because I asked for a stocking full of candy for my grandma. And I got this. I will be finishing those. But that's probably going to be the last candy that I'll have. Because I'm quitting candy. I feel like the constant sugar, it's just not good for me. And I feel like every time I want to lose weight, I constantly crave eating something sweet or something really unhealthy and end up getting lazy afterwards. So I want to cut candy out too. Which brings me on to the hardest one. The one that's going to eat at me alive. Quitting soda. Now there's an exception. There's these beverages called ice and you can get them at like Walmart or something. It's like carbonated water, but it has like 10 calories a bottle. Those to me are fine because I don't really look at them as soda, even though it literally is soda. But I've never looked at them like that because it was a lot healthier and it had stuff in it like nutrient or nutrients. I don't know. It had some stuff in it that was healthier than soda. And it doesn't have all the shit that soda has in it. So that's an exception. But other than that, I'm quitting anything soda-like. Even diet sodas, no Dr. Pepper, no Pepsi, no diet Mountain Dew, no normal Mountain Dew, none of it. I want to quit soda. And I'm going to. Now, I'm going to be 100% honest here. I will occasionally try new things that come out. Like, let's say, uh, next Halloween, right? Mountain Dew releases a new soda. Like, another Mountain Dew Voodoo. But it's a different type, and they made it a different type of flavor. I'll try it. I'll take like a swig of it, get a drink, and be like, hmm, that's pretty good. But then I'll put it down, and I will not finish it. That's as far as I'll go when it comes to soda anymore, is I'm not going to have it really at all. But if I ever do come across something new that I want to try, I will take a test, and I will try it, but I will not drink it at all. So these New Year's resolutions is going to be really hard. The first three months are going to be agonizing. They are going to be so difficult. And I've been mentally preparing myself for that. So honestly, I'm hoping next year I can lose a lot of weight. I can gain a happier headset or headspace with healthier foods, more protein, cutting out all these really unhealthy things and just making myself better because I'm tired of failing. And I've done it a lot. I remember there's even weight loss vlogs on this channel where I would go for walks and I'd be talking to the camera, explaining my weight loss, saying how it's going. I I kept giving up on it. But I'm going to be exercising every single day in 2024. That means at the least getting 6,000 steps on my step tracker or at most getting as many steps as I can and then working possibly at night if I get back in the FedEx and I get a shit ton of exercise. So I have a lot going on. Not only that, I just haven't really been motivated to record a lot of gaming, but that's just me. But I'm... I'd say I'm back and I plan on making videos occasionally from time to time. Not every single day. I'm not going to lie about it. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm going to still be working on music. So if you want to check out my music channel, check out JDS in the description. 
Check out Devil's Game. Oh my God, I was super proud of how that song came out. I was really flipping proud of that. <laughs> it is so good. I don't know what it is. It's like I listened to it and I was like, oh my God, it's so fucking good. But I was really happy with it. So please check that out in the description below. But anyway, um, I'm back. I'm sorry that I haven't uploaded. And I'm sorry that I haven't really made much gaming content as of late. The last two videos I made were based upon my music. When this is supposed to be a gaming channel. Uh, the last two videos I made was I uploaded my album for Bad Decisions. Which was a pretty mid album. Honestly, after getting my brand new microphone here. And I started making music with that. And I started to do. Uh, I started to take more time into the songs instead of just rushing them. Because all the songs on uh, the album Bad Decisions were pretty flipping rushed. And I didn't like how a lot of them came out. But I decided to flip, say fuck it and just make it an album anyway. So that's that. That's why Wistful reacted to it. And he was like, eh, some of it's okay. Some of it's not. Some of it's fine. Like, they're all fine. But there's some that are better than others. Like, I, don't get me wrong. There's a few on there that really stand out that a lot of people liked. Like, Without You was really good. Uh, Beautiful is on Spotify. And it's my most popular song right now. And uh, Bug in My Shoe, in my opinion, is really good. And uh, the two songs where I had features... Uh, the two other ones, Dying and Whatever Goes Around Comes Back Around, those two are really good in my opinion. But Stupid was really bad. I think it was just a really shitty attempt at a garbage song as a joke. And I put it on the album for some reason. Um, Never really bothered me. I thought it was good at first. And I kind of stopped caring about it pretty quickly. And the rest of them on the album, like they're fine. Just they're not great. But after getting my new mic and working on other music, I've been doing pretty good. Like Devil's Game, my new one, like I said, it absolutely amazing. I put in a lot of vocal effects. I tried to make it sound as good as possible, and I was really proud of that. And um, Fade is going to be coming out on Spotify on January 7th. Let's go. I will have my own song on Spotify. Yes, I did say it's beautiful on Spotify, but it's not under my account. It's under my friend Mr. Crispy's. So... Check out my music channel. It'll be linked in the description. I'm going to be trying to do an upload over there at least every once to two weeks. Depends. I don't know. And, um, yeah. I hope y'all enjoyed this vlog video. And I will see you all within the next video. I'm going to do just like a awkward stop taking video thing.